Hello, and welcome to our second episode of Top Shelf, our show about all the gadgets and weird things and robots and spiders that we found here at CES. Show floor is open, so we have all kinds of stuff to talk about. I'm here with my co-host, Neelai Patel. Hello. This, this show is welcome also back. about conspiracy theories. It's also mostly about conspiracy theories. I feel like I have really wild hair today, so my hobo effect is like... So you have better. like extra conspiracies now? Yes. You got some sleep last night though. So I did, I slept a lot. You had more night. time to think about conspiracy yeah. things. I drank beer until I passed out. <laughs> CES. <laughs> yeah, it worked. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wandered the streets of Vegas. That's good. And then I fell asleep on the ground. I mean, it's like that's Vegas. That's yeah. what you're supposed to yeah. do in Vegas. That's good. Yeah. My right. cab drivers, I get in and they're like, where are you going to end up tonight? That's that always their first question. Really? Like, I, that's a weird, I'm going to be in bed because <laughs> I have to work tomorrow. I'll drive this Ferrari yeah. straight to sleep. Exactly. All right, let's talk about so this. So we have all kinds of crazy stuff today. So yeah. the show floor is open. Uh, there are, what, is it 150,000 people here now? Yeah, 156,000, I think, is the number. Three which and a half is, million square feet of gadgets. Which is just absurd. I'm trying yeah. as hard as I can a to A million avoid. of those square feet are the Sony and Samsung booths. That, that might actually be true. Like, Do I they, would believe they're like, that they, you know, they have, true. like, competing armies. Yeah. They we'll stand. Stand. They, yeah. That's actually more like competing video demonstrations of nothing. <laughs> competing 4K. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Taylor Swift movies. Um, uh, okay, so a couple, bunch of big stories today. Yeah. Uh, including more gaming stuff. I feel like this isn't supposed to be a it's gaming really show, gaming but it's show. kind of a gaming show. Yeah. Um, so there's this thing called the Razer Edge. We saw it last year. <laughs> we saw it last year called the Razer Project Fiona, but now yeah. it is back again. It's the Edge. It's an actual... It's kind of a tablet. It's kind of a Well, so it is console. a tablet. It's a really thick, right. giant... You saw it in the video there. It's a really thick, giant Windows 8 tablet. But that's not primarily how they want you to use it. Right. They want you to dock it into this PlayStation Move-looking thing. It's a, this double, this double move looking thing, uh, and there's a keyboard dock as well. And this whole, and it's so it's games, right? It's games in Windows 8. Yeah. It's running Ivy Bridge. It's x86. So it's full Windows yeah. 8. You can run all your games uh, like this with these move controllers. Uh, but it's incredibly expensive. Is yeah. What, so is it's what I it's it's a thousand dollars just for the thing itself, and yeah. then there's a the gamepad dock, which is the thing with the two controllers on the side, is two hundred and fifty more dollars. And then there's a docking station, which is $100 more. So this yeah. thing is like, it's it's no joke. So $1,500 later, you have not quite a gaming PC. Basically. But you do have the respect and admiration of your friends, because you are insane. Do you? Do you? Well, and, you I respect mean, and then a crazy the, person. Especially after seeing like the NVIDIA yeah. Project Shield, which seems really kind of tight and put together and like well thought out, this just doesn't. Well, look, I mean, Razer comes out every every year. It's yes, Razer has something bonkers, right? Because right? right. uh, they're like a peripheral maker, right? That's what they primarily do. They're like, right. look at our nutso mouse. This keyboard lights up. Right, and they're for gamers. It like, has that's a button. Razor's it has a picture whole... of a knife on the buttons instead of like letters. Right, and they, I think they want they want the respect. Right. So they come out with this stuff, and so it eventually comes out, right? I mean, they put out a laptop, right, with like light up keys or yeah, something. Yeah, the, the, the Razer Blade, which is the same kind of thing. It's this incredibly high end product that right. most people can't afford, and Do you most think people would never have even meetings consider. meetings where like someone's like, damn it, guys, we can't always make puns with our product names? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> okay. I genuinely hope not. Because they're running out. The Razor's Edge is like, that's enough. Oh, the Rusty Razor. There it is. That's the one. Next that's going to be their smartphone. It's next the year. gaming smartphone. The rusty razor. With the huge, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's fine. I mean, so, look, they, it is a gaming show, though. There's stuff coming out. Yeah. And there's a lot of interesting tablets coming out. This there is, are. So one in particular, well, not really. This isn't interesting as much as it's crazy. So Panasonic yeah. uh, came out this morning. They had the opening keynote this morning on mm -hmm. the show floor and used it to release a 20-inch 4K tablet. Uh, which kind of sounds crazier than it actually is. The resolution is uh, 3840 by 2560, yeah. which ends up being lower pixel density than, say, the iPad. Right. Uh, but it's still so it's it's like, 20 it's like inches and it's right? 4K. Right. Well, so it's a. But I feel like it just sounds awesome. Look, just it's want not one. your vertical height. It's your pixel density that counts. <laughs> so How is your pixel density? You tight. Know? Is it tight? tight? I'm glad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry so, to everyone watching this. The one thing I do think is cool is that they're kind of billing this for artists and photographers, right. and it has well, a I stylus think, input, which I, actually kind of makes a ton of sense. Like so the it's, way is, they're using it's it. Windows, it's full Windows 8. Is it ARM or x86? I believe it's x86. So it's like a. It, it's basically just a really nice PC that you can take everywhere. And then, okay. I think there is a market for like pro photographers uh, who are all using iPads now, and they have insane bonkers workflows. Yeah. Uh, somebody, uh, one, a photographer actually sent me a, a like a flow chart of how they get pictures from like their Mark II on an iPad, and it has like 15 it's boxes. It's brutal. Yeah. Uh, so like, there's a big market for this. I, it's not, I will say this: 4K is a marketing term at this CES. It's yes. like getting tossed around uh, far too much, and like 
a 4K tablet is really just like, you can go buy a dumb monitor that has effective 4K resolution sure. right now, and it's like $500. Sure, it's just, um, that's like the term everybody wants to use. You got it, yeah. And speaking of 4K, Panasonic also had a 4K OLED TV, which was basically the same thing as Sony released last night. Yeah. And it's just this like hilarious back and forth. Well, yeah, but Sony and Panasonic, I mean, they all have the same panel suppliers. Right. They all, so it's like the panel suppliers have done something and, and all the big companies have productized it in some way. Yeah. But like OLED TVs are, are truly, it's like, it's like if you went to a car show and everyone was like showing off a convertible that could maybe fly and like they all have the same bad idea at the same time. Right. It's coming, it's just never gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, great. Someday and you probably can't afford it anyway. Right. Yeah. Um, OLED, so the one OLED thing, story. the thing I actually think is a lot cooler is uh, Intel Perceptual Computing. It's called. It's basically Connect. Yeah. Uh, and we're seeing a ton of these demos here, where there's, you know, you're using your hands and you're doing all kinds of different motions as opposed to using just a trackpad and a keyboard. Um, and we've seen, like, I, I, I literally have a video. This is Sean Hollister, I think, but I have a yeah. video of me doing exactly the same thing with uh, Leap Motion. And there's a company here called Point Grab. Yeah. And so this Point is like, grab. this is a thing. Have like, some dignity. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's my fault. Yeah. Um, but this is a thing. And I feel like, it, especially if Intel is getting on board, like Intel can just brute force this kind of technology into everywhere. They could. I mean, they could put it in a platform. I mean, that's, and this is going to sound like a really weird comparison to make, but that's what they did with Wi-Fi. Right, they said Wi-Fi is part of Centrino, and then the next year, all the laptops had Wi-Fi. Right. And it was they, it was driven by the platform. Uh, this little creative doohickey that they're making is like, whatever. They made a connect. You're not going to put it on your laptop like this. But the next Fair. generation laptops. I will say that Intel is here trying desperately to prove that they're relevant. Yeah, right? I mean, I think Intel, like, they, they've they lost mobile. I think we can fairly safely say that they're, right. they kind of have an insurmountable deficit now. I mean, they got in in mobile. Like, I guess I mean, they ain't throwing no Qualcomm party. <laughs> exactly. I'll tell you that. Exactly. Uh, but no, I think, and, and so they have to. So it seems like if they're if they're gonna you know double down on PCs, so to speak, right. They they have to go kind of way ahead of the game and try right. to. It's exactly what you're saying. Like they have to say we're innovative. We're still doing cool stuff. We still matter. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if this is how you get there. I don't well, know I don't, if don't, like I don't think going waving like a this tablet or I, waving yeah. a laptop is the right way to go. But I will say that there is. Uh, an insane push, we talked about it a little bit yesterday, there's an insane push at this whole show to put sensors on everything and right. connect the sensors to some sort of centralized computing device. Um, and that's this, it, it's, just, they're just, it's just wilder sensors. It's right. instead of knowing how far you've walked, the computer will like look at your face right. and know how much you've cried. Right. I have to say that the, 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 tech is becoming, the tech is becoming amazing. How, like how it can tell the difference between... <laughs> 10, You're crying tears. a lot this year, I'm worried about you. I, I'm, Tears well, but, and pixel density, like yeah. the Neil Patel story. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> the tech it's is getting a lot going. better, I yeah. have to say. It's like, it can tell the difference between your fingers, and if you yeah. put something in your fingers, it can tell that that's there, and then your fingers, and it's really, it's awesome. Like, I would, I have no particular practical interest yeah, yeah. in it, Mom, but I it's Mom, I need a new computer, it knows what's in my fingers. Yeah, exactly. Fair. Um, so the, the other thing, which happened just a few minutes ago, which I actually think is hysterical, uh, is back to TVs, which, you yeah. know, it's a TV show. Only We're at CES. Uh, so Samsung and LG, within like two hours of each other, yeah. both announced the world's first curved OLED TV. Ooh. They both used the phrase world's first. Yeah. It was a curved, it's exactly what you're describing. Like they all have the same panels, it's the same, you know, they had the same thing and it clearly yeah. their development process was absolutely identical. Uh, but they both released the same thing, and it sounds it sounds like it's wild. I haven't seen either one in person yet, but or folks who have say it's gorgeous and like actually seems. Well, OLED TVs are cool. always gorgeous, right? And putting them in wacky shapes is like actually one of the promises of the technology. They just nobody can make them. Well, so why who who cares? Why why do I want a curved TV? Convince me. You seem like you're kind of into the idea. Uh, so you can stand closer to it in it. So it really? Can give you a so the idea is that I can like turn around and get four inches away from my my TV and still see it. That's cool. I'm excited about that. They might as well, I mean, this, this stuff is like they might as well make a triangle. Like, just go yeah. for it, dude. Just come on. Make a triangle TV. <laughs> just own it. Like, if 4K has a content problem, stuff that takes advantage of being curved is like the worst content problem. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. But, yeah, whatever. It's giving you a hug. Well, they, so these are, they're just showing off. They like to show off. Fair. They, I mean, and they, they will, these, this sort of the big tech comes to phones. They'll make, Samsung's always been doing curved. Right displays for phones, and I think that makes more sense there. But I agree. I mean, in Samsung's whole thing, it seems like both of those companies are like, what crazy tech demo can we show off that'll never be a prototype, yeah. or that'll never be a real product, but look at what we can do. Yeah, and Which LG is, just you know, has to keep up. Half the fun of CES, I guess. Yes. Uh, but so, it's like 80% of the fun of CES. <laughs> 80%. Yeah, I think Perfect. I've seen a price and release date for like 
one thing at CES so far. And even that was tentative, I imagine. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. They, okay. yeah. Uh, so, well, speaking of your content problem thing, uh, Sony. We should talk about that. Sony happened last night. We should. Well, so, first of all, you were at Sony. You yeah. went. How was the event? Uh, it was really good. Uh, you know, you know, Howard Stringer is like a bombastic presenter, so he gave the Sony keynotes for a long time, yeah. and he just doesn't, he never cared about anything, which made him a great presenter. Cause is a little more direct. Uh, he's, I mean, he's great, he's just not, it's not the spectacle of the Stringer. It's not, we're gonna have Will Smith drive a car on a stage, which actually happened. <laughs> There's Taylor Swift did not play. Um, you, which you were kind of sad about. I was sad about, but you know, I think that's actually not necessarily, Cause is very open with, I've been CEO for nine months, I need to revitalize my, the electronics mm -hmm. business of Sony. Um, and they, were, they very much kept on pushing, uh, Sony's the only brand that you have an emotional reaction to. Uh, which is like, maybe, I think that's true for like, people my age, right? Yeah. I don't know that's true for uh, younger people. I don't think they, they might have a PlayStation, but they probably have an Xbox. So they have a lot of work to do, it's a little bit less respectable, but the products are actually interesting. So that's the Xperia Z sitting yeah. over there. Yeah, so this the, is kind of the, the flagship new product from Sony. It's five inches, 1080p, which seems to be like the, the new sort of standard for a flagship phone. Yeah, and I really like it. It's a beautiful phone. I will say it's hilarious it has a glass back. It's like the entire industry didn't learn the lesson from Apple. It was like, <laughs> That your phone will shatter immediately. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. sorry. But um, you know, it's very nice. It's a really tight package. I actually like the software. It's not stock, obviously. Right. Um, but Sony's let, always let done though, this when it comes to. This uh, lock screen is sweet. Can when it comes to Android skins, Sony's people? always done a good job. Um, it's this weird kind of it's nuts. broken effect. It like shatters the screen, and I really like it. I mean, it serves that's, exactly this is my favorite zero purpose, on phone but right it's now. awesome. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's just neat. And, yeah. and it's good to see something different happening in the launch. Yeah, well, so, and the, I mean, so there's all kinds of cool stuff. It's got a 13 megapixel camera and Android 4.1, but you wanted to do this. I do. I'm happy about this. And you can do that, which is like. I mean, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. It's, it's silly. I don't know why you need to do that. Well, so I'm I have to say, I like, this morning, so I was, I was brushing my teeth this morning. This actually happened. Uh, I was brushing my teeth and, like, was running water over my toothbrush and, like, a little tiny bit splashed off and got onto the screen of my phone, which yeah. is sitting next to the sink. And I had, like, a 15-minute-long panic attack that my phone was broken forever. You're weird. Uh, it's just, it's what, I, it's what I'm used to with all of my electronics, that, like, if anything right. ever gets wet, it's probably broken forever and I'm screwed. Yeah. Um, but so I think, I mean, I just like the idea. And it doesn't seem to have like made let me, it bigger or Let me say one worse. thing. Yes, it does. In one specific yeah, and okay, stupid fair. way. Fair. The headphone jack is under a flap on this phone. So to get put headphones into it, you've got to open this dinky little door that seals the headphone jack away from water. And that is, at what cost, man? <laughs> at what price must we pay so you can brush your teeth over a phone? Yep. Come on. <laughs> so. <laughs> so Sony had this and another phone and a bunch of other stuff. But one of the, the as with everybody, the big thing they talked about was 4K. And yeah. so Josh Topolsky, our editor-in-chief, who you may have heard of, uh, sat down with Kaz Harai after the event and had a bunch of questions for him about 4K specifically. So, so obviously the TVs are going to be available. Uh, the big question that everybody has, the stuff we see our readers talking about, the debate we have amongst our writers is, you got the TV, mm -hmm. how do you get the content? Right, and, and you right. talked yesterday about uh, distribution. You're going to be the first distributor of 4K content. Uh, where? How do you? How do I get it? Where is it coming from? Is it on a disc? Is it? Am I downloading it? How? If I'm a consumer and I get my TV in the spring, when, where, and how do I get native 4K content onto that? All great questions. Um, and uh, you know, we're going to be announcing details. Uh, you know, as we get into uh, the spring time frame, right. uh, and really make some announcements to make sure that uh, you know the customers, when they're buying their 4K televisions from Sony, they understand you know how they're going to get uh, the access to right. the variety of content. Right. But, uh, but right now you've got an 84 inch. We have an 84 uh, 4K, inch. and there's a Correct. sort of a server setup. Yes. Where you can uh, it, essentially you're, you're getting it's a hard drive. It's, it's preloaded con 4K yes, content. Yes, indeed, yes. That's not your plan for the future yeah, this of consumer. Is more of a distribution uh, plan that we have right, in the strategy. Right. So obviously, it's not just limited to uh, X number of uh, movies or other titles right. that may be preloaded. Right. But in fact, making sure that you know consumers can access new and additional content as they become uh, available. Right. And, and, but you don't see that as physical media. I mean, I don't there, see aren't, that as there being aren't going to be native 4K discs. There's not going to be a standard well, that is. Ultimately, I think that you know, as the industry evolves 4K, 
uh, the industry may decide that a, uh, a disc format might be something that the consumers are looking for. But at right. this point, uh, before we get into that, is, sort is of that format, something that is that we were looking for distribution? Are you are you looking at that as a real possibility that you'll there'll that be a industry, standard? I think the industry needs to make sure that we come up with certain standards because again, you know, we want to make sure that it's not just uh, movie content or programming content. But as we announced yesterday, uh, you know, we want to make sure that we are also providing customers with the ability to go out with their 4K camcorders, right. for example. Right. And that's, that has to be based on a platform so that uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the material that you take on your camcorder is playable not just on Sony right. 4K monitors, but on, everybody else. On your cousin's TV. Well, it's got to it. work. You know, that's, yeah. that's interoperability yeah. that we right. need to guarantee. And, and so, Sony's talked a lot about 4K, and they have this kind of unique story for what they can offer, but you've talked to Kazurai too, yeah. and you got kind of a different answer for what they're doing with 4K. Well, the vibe I get is that, so I talked to Kaz right after the keynote, and we, you, the question, they announced the world's first 4K digital dis distribution service. Right, and which like, actually did seem to be true, unlike all of the other world's Well, they're going to do it, seen. they just don't know what it looks like. Right. And so it's like, how are you going to do it? He's like, we're going to figure it out. And you know, right now they're shipping people like a PC, like, like he said to Josh. And then he, to, to Josh, he's saying we're not ruling out anything. Maybe right. we'll have discs. You know, maybe you'll download stuff overnight. So Sony has the content, they have the products, right? And they are desperately riffing on ways to connect the two. Right. And the thing, and Paul wrote a great piece today. Uh, the the thing is, that it can't just be Sony building the connection between content and devices. It's got to be the entire industry coming up with a set of standards because I think the consumer expectation is that you can buy a Toshiba TV and a PS4 and watch 4K stuff. Well, uh, the, the expectation is that it's going to be what Blu-ray was and what DVD, right. I mean, in, in that, like, this is what you watch and all you have to do is find a thing to watch it on and you can watch the same exactly. thing on all your things. And, and that's good. I think that's not uh, only just good for consumers. I think it's actually good for the industry. But isn't, I mean, how, how could that not happen? I mean, it seems to me that it's it has to happen that way. Like, every company has to be aware of the fact that that's what I we think, need, right? I think, I think if you're Sony, you're aware of it, and, and this is what this is what Koss said to me last night, which he didn't quite say Josh, which was, it should be that way. Right. Our service should work on the TVs, but for now, it's a differentiator. So for Sony, because they have, you know, they make the movies, and then yeah. can put them on the TVs, they're going to say, well, these only work on our TVs for well, now. Well, they can, I mean, the read between the lines there is they can make sure you don't buy a Samsung TV. Right, because and making all the sure movies you, you want to watch won't work. Right, and making sure you don't buy a Samsung TV is critically important for Sony. Right. And I think they're going to explore it, but that sucks for us. Right, well, so, but then there's, like, the, the hopeful pieces of it are, like, at Samsung's booth today, we saw Netflix streaming in 4K. Right. Uh, and there were little, like, artifacty issues, but whatever, it's 4K, and that's right. awesome. Uh, and it seems like that's... You know that gives me hope that it might actually work, and eventually Sony's going to have to realize that not everybody owns a Sony TV, and they'd really like it if you'd watch Sony movies on your not Sony TV. Look, watching Spider-Man on my Sony TV is the only thing I want to do. <laughs> Just Spider-Man, yeah. 4K. Doesn't matter how much it costs yeah. me. I mean, uh, th there's there's a lot to connect. I mean, Sony's the only one. If you go to Samsung or LG or Toshiba. What they're talking about is upscaling 1080p. If you go to Sony, they're talking about making native 4K right. and distributing it to you somehow. Right. And at least that's a step. Well, and it's, I guess that's true. And But it's because they make the cameras, and they make the movies, yep. and they make the TVs. So it's like, Sony's like, well, we don't right. have to go anywhere else to do right. our stuff. Uh, but they can't be the lone holdout. I don't, yeah, I don't think they will be. And I guess eventually it'll shake out, and we're just sort of screwed until then. I just won't buy a 4K TV until then. I'm definitely buying a 4K TV. You're gonna buy the the crazy easel TV. Next year, God, I want that for four hundred thousand. Samsung's TV is like the most beautiful thing it's yes. Uh, next year when they, when they are like two grand or so, I'll probably. Buy Do you four think it'll catch on? Yeah. 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 All right, fair enough. So we have one more thing to talk about, and it's actually the coolest thing we have to yeah. talk about by far. Um, it's called the Oculus Rift. It's a virtual reality thing. It's also like the greatest name ever. Uh, and Nathan <laughs> Ingram, one of our news writers, went and got to take a look at this thing. So let's take a look at that. Hi, this is Nathan with The Verge, and we're here at Oculus, and we're taking a look at the Rift. This is their virtual reality headset, and the piece of hardware we've got right here is the uh, developer kit, which is shipping out to Kickstarter backers at the end of March. And it's pretty simple. What you see here, um, the strap goes around your head, and there's two lenses here. 
uh, that you look through for the 3D uh, virtual reality experience. And the total resolution of the screen is 1280 by 800. Each eye receives uh, 640 by 800 input. Um, you know, the, the resolution doesn't sound as impressive as some of the high-res screens you see today, but uh, we've been assured that once you put it on, you're not even going to notice that. We'll find out soon. So that's basically all there is to the uh, prototype hardware here. Uh, there's a box right here, the control box. This hooks into your PC. It's got a DVI port, HDMI, USB, and power. And that's about all there is from a hardware perspective, but what we're really looking forward to checking out is the software and how it works once you put it on. So we saw this video and we're like super into this idea and Neela and I were both like, we have to try this immediately. So yes. we actually brought some of the folks from Oculus VR here. This is Palmer Lucky, the founder. And so Palmer, tell us like, what, what is this thing that we're looking at here? So this is a prototype of the Oculus Rift developer kit. It's basically a virtual reality headset with an extremely wide field of view and ultra low latency head tracking so that it actually makes you feel like you're inside of the game. Yeah. So what's like, what, give me an idea of how, kind of how this changes, like especially for gaming, how this changes how you play games. Well, that's one of the thing, reasons we're putting out a developer kit, you know, so people can mess around with it and tell us how they think it's going to change it. But um, one thing no, for certain, no, no. no. Pay attention to <laughs> <laughs> uh, one, one thing that is going to change for certain is that, um, is that games, it's not just about maybe having a task-oriented game where it's complete task, complete task, complete task, and that's where your enjoyment comes from. One cool thing about VR, if you actually feel like you're inside of the you space... You can hit him, that's okay. You, can, right. you actually feel like you're inside of the space, and that's huge for immersion. So many games that have replaced immersion with you know, trying yeah. to accomplish goals, now it's actually about being inside of the game, and just being there might, you know, that, that'll that's be powerful tough. on its own. Yeah. And it might not be enough, but it's, it, it'll be... A, Something there are huge nerds across America who want nothing more than just be lost in like the marathon spaceship. Yeah, no I'm question. I'm just in it. No or question. amnesia or okay. something like that. I have it. All right, so let's, let's try this I want to put on my face really bad. That's all. <laughs> all right, all right. So take this, hold it up to your face, move it up and down until it's in the sweet spot. Okay. Okay. Oh, God. You doing pretty good? Oh, God. Oh, right, God, I'm it? in a spaceship. You good? I'm good. All right. Look so and tell me, tell me what we're seeing. These, David, these you look like a barrel. Here. So, so what this is back here is this is a, stere a stereoscope. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Can, can you still see it? No. My foot just hit this oh, thing. Oh, we're back. back. Yeah! All right. <laughs> Whew. Whoa. I swear I had a heart attack. All right. Um, I'm about to so have a heart attack. Joy. <laughs> so what this is, this is a stereoscopic is so 3D awesome. image. Um, it's pre-warped, you can see, to work for our fish, basically their fish eye lenses. Yes. Um, this is our Unity integration. So Unity is a great engine. We also have Unreal Engine integration in code, so you can put in other engines. But this is Unity right here. Um, this, this is basically is just a small space station. It's a tech demo. You can't really do much in it, but you can do a few things. So, so we're just looking around as this is like something? what Neil's two eyes are seeing. Yes. Yeah, so what, what you're seeing behind here is what he can see. Just for people noticing, you know, trying to analyze latency or anything, yeah. the input on this TV has quite a bit of latency. Fair so enough. it's actually not lagging nearly yeah, as much. So as I will say, head. I'm wearing this thing. I mean, as I'm talking, uh, it's moving up and down, and on the image is moving up and down, wow. which is crazy. Like, it, it, knows, it knows it's on my face. All right, so, so what you're going to do is uh, look all the way up. This uh, is, yeah, look all the way up. Now also show, like try touching your ear to your shoulder. Uh, so, tilt, your oh. tilt your head, tilt your head. Wait, I can't, so, there you go. I can't move my ears in that way. <laughs> so that, that, that's something that you can't do in a normal, in a normal game. Whoa. You don't get any roll effects. All right. um, can I go somewhere? Yes, you can go. So here's the controller. The right stick will move you, you around. The left stick will rotate. Do you there like you I'm go. looking at my hands? Yes. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. Like oh, God. Ah! All right. Ah! All right, so. <laughs> That's just so cool. Take it easy. Try to use the, like, the your head more than you're using whoa. the right thumbstick. So I'm looking at this fan, and I can like track the whoa, dude. Okay, I know that, that me looking at a fan is not awesome for you, but it is super trippy for me. So Hold you can on. go like shine, down and around shine, the corner. Shine, okay, I'm don't sorry. Ruin it. That's, that's my dog. Okay, whoa. Take your time. This is whoa, God. So I'm not good at video games. I don't know if that's <laughs> obvious to everyone. Uh, this is awesome. What's some stuff? Whoa, God. Oh God. Oh God! Is there? There's a camper. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw up from watching you do this. <laughs> uh, I mean, I will say like this is ridiculous. Like it, I don't like 3D things. Um, I usually get a headache and hate myself. But this is legitimately like awesome 3D. Like, so like virtually, this feels like I'm in this room. Yeah. Uh, go up to those sparks. Try looking into them. It'll actually hello. feel like they're. That's walk further. Feels. Walk oh, further. I got. There you go. Why? No. <laughs> no, I'm on fire. <laughs> no. Okay, come on. This is awesome. I mean, like. I, I don't, you can probably see this on the screen behind me, but this feels like these are falling on me, uh, which 
Ah, uh, God. And it actually yeah. feels like those pipes are actually running by your head. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, these pipes, I'm pointing at nothing. I mean, that's that's the level of immersion that, God, I gotta get out of this part. You're just trying to point uh, at the pipes. Yeah, no, that's the level. I mean, I feel like I can point at things while I'm wearing this. I mean, I also feel like I'm chaotically moving around in space. Because that's exactly what's you're, You are chaotically moving. I, might I have to say, here's what I'm Try moving say. one at a time. This no, is no, like no. drunk knee line in space. Here's what I want you to know. If I could move my body like this <laughs> in, in like real life, this is what I would do. I would just, <laughs> oh my God, I'm dancing. It's like you're the Flash. Have you ever seen me on a dance floor at a nightclub on drugs? It's, it's very because it looks it's very serious. It actually looks like I'm wearing a headset holding an Xbox controller. <laughs> uh, is there other stuff for me to look? Oh god. Whoa. Yeah, there's a few. So cool. okay, that was really awesome. That looked like I was gonna hit my head. Like I stopped because that is about head height for You're me. And that that is very uncomfortable. Well that's and one of I the cool things about VR is you actually notice the sense of scale me. in the environment a lot. Yeah, I mean this is like I'm I'm like inches away from this. I wanna that's where, <laughs> hello. Again, I like to point out that for the average viewer, what this looks like. No, you're wrong. This is amazing. Pawing this is the fine. Air stupidly. Yep. Oh my it's god. Great. Hello. Ooh. Can I go to Medieval Village? Oh, hey now. My. Hmm. This is ridiculous. So, and so now he's in a completely, entirely different place in just a few seconds. Yes. But I'm also just doing this dance. <laughs> <laughs> Try to use one thumbstick at a time. No. So Look, one why don't you use one thumb when you can use two? <laughs> well, use your head instead of the thumb to move. Oh, Try I got doing it. that. Yeah. So tell me, like, this where awesome. are we in the process of this becoming like a thing I can buy and play games with? Uh, so you know, we're shipping developer kits in two months for three hundred dollars. Because you started and, as a Kickstarter, right? Yeah, we, that we, was the, see, the yeah, first. So we started as a Kickstarter, raised two and a half million dollars to ship developer kits. Um, as far as when everyone's going to be able to do this, that really depends on the feedback that we get from developers. You know, we're putting these out there oh, so that whoa. we can hear what, you know, from people like him and say, these are the improvements that we want to see. So this is what we really need. And then we can deliver that in a consumer version. So, so I can't like peer at things. No, so right now all you have is rotational tracking. Our tracker is currently a gyroscope, an accelerometer, accelerometer and a magnetometer. Um, so it's only netting you basically rotational tracking. And right, also, right. if you roll your head, we have it on a neck model. Wow. So um, it knows your head can only move in a certain way. So you get a little bit of position there. But if you're doing this, you're not going to get anything. I don't know um, what you just did. Because so I'm what, if I lean there. forward and lean backwards, ah, I don't get gotcha. anything. That's something that we're working on for the okay. consumer version. It's, it's basically a must-have kind of feature um, to keep players from getting disoriented, to really connect oh, that God. feel of immersion. I'm going to take the controller one more time, and I'm going to put Please. you in the medieval village because you wanted to be there. Yes. So right, here what, you go, what other village. kinds of like movements and stuff can you program into this? What else have you tested and thought about doing? Movements in terms of what your head can do? Or, or just other oh, things God. that Neil so, could be doing right now. So one of the things uh, that we're looking into doing is uh, integrating different kinds of motion controllers. So that you know, we think it'd be really cool in a future version to be able to see your hands or to be able mm -hmm. to hold a weapon yeah. and actually move it around in a real space or track your whole body. And those are all things that we're experimenting right. with if I right could, now. Like, look, so the thing I can't do in 3D is like, I can't look around this thing. Exactly. You don't have any positional tracking right now, which right. you know, you probably missed it because you were th so enthralled. But we, <laughs> that, that, it's, that's one of the things that will be in right. the consumer version. I'm leaving the village. Ah! <laughs> I look like a bird? So our producer just said in my ear, I look like a, some that's, kind of bird. That's exactly correct. I do? Like a terrifying blind bird that oh. might kill you at any moment. I mean, oh god. One interesting thing, you know, right? This isn't a next-gen controller; it's just a gamepad because it's a tested, you know, interface right. that's good for developers to use for programming. Right. Yeah, so, um, what, what when you say developers, are you are you talking to gaming companies or like indies people or who, I, who else? So, who else? I mean, I come from the indie community, you know, the hacker enthusiast mm -hmm. community. I think that there's going to be some really amazing stuff that comes out of indies and small studios that are just building stuff from the ground right. up. I mean, um, just I'm excited about this, like. Coming up to this building and looking up to see what it is, instead of like having to like run away and look at the sign, is like very different. Like it's a very, it feels like I'm in this medieval village. I would like, I mean, if I could just sit on this rock and maybe get some wine and some cheese, <laughs> this is very relaxing. Just sit and drink some wine, real, real life wine and cheese in yeah, VR exactly. village. Am I in a lake? It's a little oh. pond. Oh god, I could just sit here for hours. But there will be AAA uh, titles that uh, that'll be really interesting. But I think that the most interesting thing overall will be indies who build games for VR from the mm -hmm. ground up. Because like the iPhone, the best games are not the you know ports of first-person right. shooters. They're the one that use touchscreen analog yeah. sticks. They're the ones that were designed with the hardware in mind. Right. And it's the same thing for probably the Wii, where there's some games that used it in maybe a gimmicky fashion where it was shoehorned in. Yeah. But Nintendo first-party titles, most people would agree, they utilize motion controls in a really good way. I think it's going to be the same way for VR. People are going to have to make 
games that are designed with virtual reality in mind. I don't know how to get out of that pond. <laughs> so you, That's, I'm. Uh, it's, you a one, it's, your, it's a one. It's a one-way ticket. At which at which point do I drown? At which point does the headset alert me that my my lungs are rapidly filling with water? Oh, I'm out of the pond. Oh, what you <laughs> did it? There you go. So yeah. when uh, can you give us an idea of like the timeline of all this? You're shipping out to developers in two months. And so then, we're shipping out to developers in two months. We're already working on prototypes of the next generation consumer version. Um, we're not going to ship it until we have time to get feedback from developers. But it's not going to be one of those things that never shows up or takes years and years. It's going to be in the relatively, relatively near future. Fair enough. Cool. Well, thank you so much for coming thank out and you. showing thank us. Thank you for and having me. If thank only for, for the it. unbelievable gifts that we're please, about to see of Neelai Patel. Please do not this take video. this away from my head. <laughs> So, I all mean, right, this Eli, is awesome. Uh, you can keep playing. It's um, cool. I'm gonna, Just stay. Hold on. You'll be fine. Oh, God. Let's make sure his eyes aren't all bloodshot. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. Is, is it worse out here? You'd rather go back? I mean, it was very relaxing. <laughs> I found a leg. I left the Is leg. this going to be the new massage chairs where you go and you get like massage that. chairs? Yeah. You I mean, go was, and you put it you on, on the seat. You just hang out in Medieval Village for a while. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I will go. say, like, taking that off and coming back to this space actually felt like returning to this space as opposed to like turning not, your TV off. not looking at a screen yeah. anymore. And that's what it's all about, that's being great. inside yeah. the game. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you again. Yeah, thank you. Um, awesome. that, thank you so much for letting me play with that. That is, thank you. That is our show. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, we have all kinds of other stuff. We have first tomorrow morning with all the other stuff that's going on in the world of CES. There's a lot of it. Uh, we have a ton of videos all over our site of crazy gadgets and people and interviews and check all of that out. Uh, and we'll be back tomorrow at three o'clock, but until then, I leave you with what is almost definitely the best video we no, have no, ever this produced. Is the this is definitely the best thing happened. we've ever done in our lives. Yes. Happy New Year! I'm part of a new generation of texting. I'm John, but better known by Tornado. Tornado 92. I just pwned half the world from backstage. So eat it, Volcano Mom 53. And I have a sweet job and a hot girlfriend. And by hot, I'm in like fuego. <laughs> Boom. My phone is my conference room. Heads up. <laughs> Imagine funny cat videos meets Gangnam Style. Boom. Can you dig it? I can dig it. We're born mobile. We're born mobile. You gotta be mobile if you wanna be a top dog. Or a tough ass warrior. Or super popular. Or a CEO. Two years ago, right here on this stage, Microsoft took a major step forward. And this year, Paul? 10,000 applications were added in the last month alone. CNN. Sony's Crackle, Songza, Twitter, Expedia, and Fitbit. They also have plenty of power. Huffington Post, the No Textbooks, Dropbox, Barnes & Noble, Nook, the Disney's Where's My Water application. We're working with some amazing people. Please welcome Guillermo del Toro. <laughs> Actor Alice Eve. Everybody's favorite eight-foot feathered friend, Big Bird. All right. Archbishop Desmond Tutu in South Africa. CS 2013. Rolls-Royce with an electric motor. Ladies and gentlemen, Maroon 5. all part of what we're calling Gen M now, the born mobile generation. Born, born mobile? mobile? Born mobile. Born mobile generation. Born mobile? Born mobile. Born mobile. Were you born mobile? Not exactly.